Alright, so now we know a lot of things about the soils on this site since we've dug our pit, we've textured our soils, and looked at various aspects of it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through our ecological site key and we're going to use the information we learned from the soil survey and also from our soil pit information to follow through the key and see if we can determine what site we're on. So the key that we're using here is Major Land Resource Area 34A which is the cool central desert basins and plateaus. And this is the Green River Great Divide Basin Key. So we're in a seven to nine inch precip zone. And this is the key that really fits all of the land that is surrounding us. The very first part of the key asks us about soil depth. So that was why it was important for us to dig a hole and understand what is in those subsurface layers. So the first question is if the soil is very shallow, uh, or if it's shallow or if it's deep. So very shallow soil would be less than 10 inches. A shallow soil would be 10 to 20 inches. And then it, we dug past 20 inches, so we know we at least have a moderately deep to deep site. So answering the key uh, to that greater than 20 inch depth puts us in group three of the key. So group three is a set of sites that are all deep in depth, and the first question asks about sites that receive significant additional moisture from runoff of adjacent slopes or from intermittent perennial streams or from a water table. And the alternate question to that is that if it's an upland site that doesn't re receive additional moisture. And so that is the case on this site. Uh, we are not down in a riparian area or in a run-in what we call a run-in site, where moisture would accumulate. In fact, we're actually on more of a convex type of slope. So the second question then takes us to another set of questions that ask about chemistry and if the site is saline or alkaline. And one of our major ways of determining that is, of course, to look around and see if we have any indicator plants that would tell us and indicate that there were salts and we really don't have those plants on that site. So the other question asks is if the soils are very fine sandy loams to sandy clay loams with a calcium carbonate layer below 15 inches of the soil surface. And so we went and tested for carbonates and we did not find any. So we really couldn't answer yes to that question either. So now we have soils of very fine sandy loams to sandy clay loams strong to violent effervescence at the surface. And we didn't have that either. We had no carbonates at the surface. So now we have our last option, which is that sites are not saline and or alkaline. And so that is the question that we're going to answer yes to. So our next set of questions talk about sites occurring along terrace breaks or perennial intermittent streams with coarse fragments up to 10 inches dia in diameter, covering 50 to 75 percent of the soil surface and making up 40 to 50 percent of the volume in the top 20 inches. And that's clearly not our situation here. And then the next one is just sites not as above. So we're going to follow that part of the key. Now is when texture comes into play. So the very first question in this set of questions is that if the textures are heavy, range from silty clay to heavy clay, with slight to severe soil cracking in dry conditions, and our soil is quite coarse, so the answer is not yes to that. So we go to the next one, which is soils are not as above. So then in our next one, we'll go to the soil textures are coarse and range from fine sandy loam to sand. And the next one is soils are not as above. Well, definitely we're in that course range. So we'll go to those series of questions. The next series of questions, soils coarse, loamy sand to sand textures, sometimes as dunes, darker light colored. And the next one is soils, fine sandy loams, sandy loams or loamy sands in texture, light or dark colored. And so you see there's a little overlap there. We're to loamy sand and loamy sand is actually in both parts of this question. So this would be the case where, knowing what I know about this site, I clearly feel like, based on the plants that I see, the landscape position, uh, everything that I know to, to be present on this site, it's helping guide me to say this is a sandy site. But my confirmation for that 
is to grab the, both of those ecological site descriptions and to read through those site descriptions. And then from there, I will make my best educated decision based on a preponderance of the information contained in the site descriptions. So in discussing soil texture, uh, we were on this edge and it being a loamy sand. However, noting that there was some subsoil uh, structure development going on in the subsoils, uh, that was a further evidence that helped show us that that was a sandy site and not a sands site. So looking at the vegetation, um, we do have rubber rabbit brush, which is typically on this in this precipitation zone. You really need to have some pretty sandy soils to support that species of rabbit brush. We have the Indian rice grass and the needle and thread, which are pretty predominant on the site. And then we have the Wyoming big sage. And those are all things that add up to, again, this preponderance of information that helps guide us toward the fact that we're on a sandy ecological site.